Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you my league starter that I want to play for 3.2 Bestiary. Now I have a level 95 character that I played last league, which is my Death's Oath character, and I'll be recreating that character for the league start. Uh, I did want to make something from scratch, but to be honest, they didn't really change the passive tree at all, so I kind of want to just refine some of the builds I've played previously, and then maybe with the currency I gain, I'll probably make something based around the new sets. But anyway, to leak start, I want to try out my Death's Oath character, and before I get started and explain everything, because mainly I'm just going to go over the changes since I've already made many build guides for this character, uh, I just want to get started in a map to show you guys what to expect from the character after investing some currency into it. Now, I need to make this as a disclaimer that this character is not made for bossing. Uh, I'm playing in the Hardcore League, and this character is pretty much just meant to farm maps efficiently and not die. That's pretty much the goal of it. So... Let me go ahead and just get in this T11 shaped strand. I've been testing around with a few links because for people who have been watching before, I was using Phase Run previously, which I don't think there's anything wrong with. It's just since they said they buff monster damage and stuff, I'm probably... Oh, that's that's why you want Fortify. Uh, since they buff like monster damage and stuff, uh, I'm definitely going to try to use like Shield Charge Fortify. Um, we do get so much more tanky, like so much more tanky in the patch, so I'm so excited for that. And I'll be covering all of that stuff later. Yeah, like, I, I kill the mobs too fast here to get, like, Vigilant Strike Fortify, so... I just have to put in Fortify with Shield Charge, that's all. And that's pretty much the bosses. It's okay single target, it's bearable, nothing too crazy. Uh, that of course is without using any spreading rot jewels. Uh, spreading rots would make that like 1.5 times faster if I use two of them, but I just don't really see the need in doing that because I think it's like okay as it is. Is he like giving him head? Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the character and things to do because I know I wouldn't really necessarily recommend this to new players as a league starter just because I say that playing a CI build and not understanding how CI works is probably not the best way to start a league. Of course, you are free to do pretty much whatever it is that you'd like. But to go over some of the core things that you'd need, you can start playing Death's Oath at level 62. That's the level requirement for the actual Death's Oath chess piece. Um, you don't really need much with this build. All you have to do is have essentially your normal and cruel lab complete because it will unlock Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion. Um, and in the patch, which I can show you here, it's actually much stronger now. So to go over some of the changes between the... Actually, hold on. Before I go over the changes, let me just go over my gems again. Uh, just to confirm, though, all of this stuff is already archived on my YouTube. Um, if you'd like, I can put the, the YouTube links in there. The only reason why I'm not advertising them too much is because... Those were started with like leveling gear in a new league. We're not going to have leveling gear. So I'm going to like simulate it and do like a uh, kind of like a practice race with myself. And I'll be streaming that today. Uh, so you guys can tune in for that if you want like specific information. So I've got Swift Affliction, Efficacy, Arcane Surge, Conch Effect, Void Manipulation, and Lestoration on my chest piece currently. Now on a league start, you're not going to have five off color. You're probably going to have four off color. It's not that difficult. You're either going to play around between like dropping Conch Effect or Void Manipulation, entirely dependent on whatever your colors roll. So to roll this chest piece, you want to use the Verici socket method, which is basically you're going to just keep using Verici to add a socket until you get the associated colors and then hopefully rolling that you get the last one on red. It is pretty expensive, but it's much cheaper than trying to six link something. Um, one of your core things you want to try to get early is your Alepathy, of course. It is your best way of getting single target. You will be leveling with Essence Rain Contagion, so you don't really have to like worry about forcing things into your build. Just transition really whenever you feel is necessary. But Alepathy really adds a huge amount of single target for you. 
uh, and then gives you access to like the blight jewels as well. Your weapon is probably going to be like a dark seer. You don't have to use a breath of the council right away. I just like it because of course ink AOE and damage. Um, alternatively, you could use like an ephemeral edge. Really, you can use whatever you want. Um, you don't have to go that far out of your way to scale death's oath unless you're trying to push it into like really high tier maps. Um, your accessories, it's very important that you get stats on your accessories because you're going to need 180 strength for your Death's Oath and you're going to need dexterity if you want to run like Fall Grace or like faster attacks at a high level. Um, so definitely that's what your accessories are made for. Uh, our full build actually uses a unique piece in every piece of gear except for our, like our three accessories here, not including the belt. Your helmet and your shield are just going to be high ES and essentially like... Um, Filling in resistance. There are a couple of unique helmets you can use, um, but of course you're not going to have them day one. So two of the ones that I would say would be good contenders would be like Eber's Unification, which is the minus Chaos Res Aura whenever you cast like Blight or I think even Shield Charge. Uh, another one is uh, Veil of the Night. Sorry, not Veil of the Night. That's terrible. You don't ever want to use that one. Uh, another one is called the uh, the uh, Heretic's Veil. There we go, Heretic's Veil. Okay, so now to go into the next part, I want to show you guys the main differences between um, the current Death's Oath character I'm playing and what's changing in the patch. So, my current Death's Oath character is running the following curses. Blasphemy, Temporal Chains, and Despair. And a lot of people asked me, you know, why didn't I go for Tri-Curse on Malediction? And I was honest, I was like, well, to be, to be fair, I'm level 95 on this character. I really don't ever really take much damage except for like Detonate Dead, Porcupines, maybe a boss hits me in the face. Um, so I didn't really feel like the need was necessary for Enfeeble because I don't know if Enfeeble works against Porcupine Explosions. Enfeeble gets reduced damage on bosses and I don't think it counteracts DD at all. So those are the main sources that hurt my character and I didn't really feel it was necessary. However, with the new changes, let's go over a couple things. Uh, so I'm actually just gonna open up a little comparison tree here because it'll probably be easier okay so let's look at occultist my baby all right so previously with our tree we went and we picked up void beacon we are not getting void beacon anymore so this is the only concern i have with a with the bit of damage we might be losing however that would really only affect us for single target i'm pretty sure for mapping it's going to be totally fine so we're going to start off with 10 and 12. Uh, 10 being Wicked Ward is the exact same. Nothing got changed on it. Um, 10 is really important because if you want to go CI early, it's important to have some type of sustain. And Energy Shield Recharge is not interrupted by damage if Recharge began recently. Very important for playing a CI character without like Leech or something. Uh, Vile Bastion was crazy buffed. It now adds a flat 150 energy shield, which means our Death's Oath character is, you can push about 10,000 ES, maybe even a little bit more if you prioritized your gear. I sacrificed a lot of ES to go damage here. Like you can see, I can just pull out of this and literally just back into ES here and ES here. There's an ES node over here and stuff. Uh, I could drop like Green Dream and put an ES jewel in as well. And I only have like a 250 ES helmet and a 200 ES helmet. So there's room for improvement everywhere. Um, and I don't have intel anywhere either, or at least not in too many places. So that's one huge buff. The percent energy shield recharge per second, uh, so what it was before is it was 0 0.5 and you can have an infinite amount. Now it's 1% and you can have up to 30. I still think this is totally fine. 30% ES regen per second is still quite crazy. Uh, so I'm honestly okay with that. And it makes it better for things like bossing, where they like spawn a few ads, uh, you would you're, they're not going to spawn like 7,492 ads. They'll spawn like seven ads or something. So you get like 7% regen. You also get cannot be stunned while you have energy shield. Guess what that means? That means that we can change from Soul of the Brian King to something like Soul of Lunaris. We get additional movement speed, which is always good because we're charging right through packs. We get physical damage reduction while we're going through the packs. We're going to get chance to avoid projectiles, which is great because with Vol Grace and our Quartz Flask, we're sitting at like 70 dodge and spell dodge almost. Uh, we get an additional chance to dodge attacks and spells if you've been hit recently, so we can cap that out. And then you avoid projectiles that have chained. The last one doesn't really help too much, but I'm sure it's good for like party play or if you like decide to use a golem or something. Okay, so going over some other changes that are really cool. Uh, number four, which is that big explosion that you see happening everywhere. That's pretty much our whole build. Profane Bloom. Uh, your curses can apply to hexproof enemies. I cannot stress how crazy this is for survivability with our characters. Uh, I remember playing with my old friend Bobbington a while ago. He had like 
Basically, when Curses became the meta with Enfeeble and Temporal Chains, it was like almost impossible to die when you were mapping, except for things like a curse on you and Roa charging you from off screen, punching you in the face for 5k, and then Volatile exploding and killing you. That doesn't happen anymore. One, because Volatile was changed, and two, because guess what? Your curses can apply to hexproof enemies. Get fucked, Roas. So that's really, really cool to see. Uh, it also just makes it feel better with the build because it doesn't feel like you're shit at one thing, you know? Um, so the other thing that's kind of like a stealth buff, but it's actually pretty crazy, is cursed enemies, you or your minions, we're not playing a summoner, so this is okay, but that's pretty cool. Um, they increase the chance of that profane bloom proc from 20% to 25%. That's a solid 5%. That's really good because we're not using things like obliteration, although you totally could if you want. So any percent increase to this explosion is awesome. Um, the reason why I really, really, really like this explosion is because the jewels that we're getting is we're not trying to scale damage over time. We're trying to scale damage if you've killed recently. Uh, this also pushes me to another reason of why I said I don't recommend it necessarily for bossing. It's great for things like liches because you're CI and you're immune to chaos, but for like things like Shaper and stuff, it's going to be really slow compared to a lot of other builds. Increased damage if you've killed recently will apply to your Ascendancy proc, Profane Bloom, which deals a percentage of target's maximum life. So you're scaling a huge multiple, like a huge initial hit off of your increases, which is really, really good. Um, what else do we have on here? Now, one other thing I may be a little bit concerned about is that we are losing the minus 20% uh, chaos resist, so I'm scared Profane Bloom may not be as strong as it was before. Hopefully, everything's going to be okay. I, I really don't think we're going to have an issue with Path of Power Creep right now. But moving on to the next one, the thing I'm trading up for um, Void Beacon is the new Malediction. Malediction is now 15% increased effective curses. This is going to be important because I'm losing 10% curse effect because I'm going to be I'm not using a quality blast from anymore, which I'll explain. Um, but you still get an extra 5% increased curse effect, and this little node here, number three, is a curse effect node. So we actually get a total of 10% curse effect doing this. When you kill an enemy for each curse on the enemy, that this doesn't matter to us. Enemies you curse, which is going to be primarily 85% of the screen, uh, have malediction. So Malediction means that they deal 10% reduced damage to us, and they take 10% increased damage. This 10% increased damage used to be right here on number 4, which is your Profane Bloom, but they moved it to Malediction. So Malediction gives you 15% curse effect, one additional curse, and Malediction, which makes them take an increase, which is a multiplier, and make them deal less. So in this patch alone, we're getting 150 energy shield, immunity to stun, we're getting more curse effect. We get an additional curse, which is going to be enfeeble. We're using fortify on our shield charge. We get 10% mitigation from maledict, and we're switching our major pantheon. Did I say that we get an extra 150 ES, by the way? It's going to be crazy. I'm so excited to see what happens uh, in this league in terms of like power creep and stuff. And now let me talk about two things and how you're going to fit in enfeeble with the build. So there is a new chase unique called... Uh, at Ziri's Reflection. Now, this is only off of Uber at Ziri, uh, to my knowledge, via a prophecy, but this shield gives you... Um, I don't know how high this rolls up to, but it's going to roll high enough because it already has a 50 intelligence roll. So this is automatically going to be, like, insane already. This is going to be, like, at least probably, like, I don't know, a 250 ES shield, 260 ES shield or something, maybe 230, I don't know. The math doesn't matter. It's OP. You get all resistance on this shield. Again, you get a crazy intelligence roll. This is almost equivalent. This is like 10% uh, energy shield on the tree. Uh, you get curse reflection. I don't really think that matters. Unaffected by curses means that you can drop an affix on one of your flasks and you can use like, um, you can use like the uh, adrenaline prefix so you can move faster. Uh, I could even potentially swap out a flask for something else. You also get increased effect of curses, which is going to work for everything you do. So... Let me go pull up the PoE Aura Calculator and show you guys the current character. So, our current character as stands, this is our exact tree right now on the Death's Oath character. We have a total of 14% reserve mana. So, let's go ahead and plug everything in here. We have 14% reserve mana. We are running Blasphemy times 2 with Discipline. Our goal, though, is to add in Enfeeble because we don't want to, you know, we want to make sure we're using all three of our curses. So to add in Enfeeble, all we have to do 
is go to our passive tree, plug in two uh, additional reservation nodes. So that puts us at 8% reservation. So that's what, 22? So let's tag in another Blasphemy. Now we still can't cast anything yet. So the next step we're gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you about that helmet we were talking about. Heretic's Veil is a pretty underplayed helmet now. It's, it's not really used very often, um, mainly just because I guess there's no real need if you just insta-kill everything, but for our build it works pretty well. It's going to give us plus one a level of socketed cursed gems, which is going to work for our despair, our enfeeble, and our temporal chains. Uh, we do lose the quality blasphemy because it gives us blasphemy, and the only way for us to get a quality blasphemy is if we had a level 21 blasphemy, which would get the plus one from the socketed curse gems, which would make a level 22 socketed blasphemy, and then it would take the 10% off of that because it's the same level, I believe. I could be incorrect there. Instead, we're going to be using an enlighten. Um, Enlightened because it gives a little bit of mana reservation, but don't worry, it's only level two that you need. So the level two enlighten. Um, three Blasphemies, which lets us, you know, three Blasphemies in Discipline, and then tagging in the Heretic's Veil, we now have the same amount of mana as we had before. Blight doesn't cost that much. You can see here, I'm running currently with 63 mana, and here's my Blight. It's not that bad. Now, of course, if I had, like, Onslaught and everything else, I would go Oom, but, of course, I mean, Rallying Cry gives you a flat amount of mana regen, which you can see is located right here. Uh, so that's some, some things I'm super excited for. And, like, it's not even that big of a loss. Like, Heretic's Veil is about 200 ES. This is a 200 ES shield. Uh, Adziri's Reflection is probably going to be the same amount. Of course, though, that's probably going to be retardedly expensive. Um... Yeah, and then I would say the other things to do is definitely prioritize trying to get a Darkness Enthroned. I don't know how rare this is going to be, but for sure, like, the jewels on here are just absolutely insane. If I were to take them out, I mean, I go down 700 ES. So that's that's pretty that's pretty yummy yummy. Um, so to comment, I guess to answer a common question as to why I'm not using a Witchfire Brew. Uh, for people who don't know, a Witchfire Brew does not scale off of Curse Effect. Um, it also does not scale off a of flask effect. The only thing that would scale would be the increased damage over time that you see on the sulfur flask. So by scaling the curse effect, you're actually scaling the multiplier on despair, uh, which is the cursed enemies have minus chaos res and cursed enemies take increased damage from over time. That is what you're trying to scale. That is why we want curse effect as well. Um, that is like huge for our damage. Anyway, that's pretty much about it for the character. Uh, bandits are going to be kill all. Remember, um, we're going to be leveling with Essence Drain, so I'm just going to give you guys, I guess, a little rundown of what I did to level up. Remember, I am going to be like simulating this a little bit today on the stream. I don't know, maybe like a few hours from this video. I'm going to go ahead and play through and like pretty much play Solo Cell Found and just you know see how it goes because I leveled before and it was no problem at all. But we're going to start off with probably spell damage. Uh, we're going to go... Here, I'll just make a new tree. We're going to start off with spell damage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clip into our life. Uh, you can definitely get Blast Radius if you feel like you need it for Contagion. I'm pretty sure you're going to be fine. Uh, we're going to move down. Grab a Jewel if you get a good Jewel. Otherwise, continue and just move on. Uh, actually, is it? Hold on a second. Okay, yeah, yeah we're good. You're going to come over here. Probably grab your damage over time for Essence Drain, move down, grab your Chaos damage, all here. And the reason why this pathing is so good is because we get so much life doing this. If you feel like you want additional life, even pick up the life here, and then you get a Jewel for life. This right here is enough life for you to get to about level 65 to 70, in my opinion. This is all the life I ever used on my three Death's Oath characters. And then I essentially just farm Blood Aqueduct from like 65 to, I don't even know, 70 something, 75, 77, uh, because I personally like Blood Aqueduct and I just farm it until I'm ready to do the full, you know, swap and go fight Katava because when you're playing like a really odd build, you kind of need all the additional help you can get when leveling through the axe. Additionally, if you want more life, you could even spec right into here. Um, into Blood Drinker. Now, you're going to be playing kind of a hybrid character, so you are going to run Discipline as well, and you can totally spec into ES nodes. Um, but after this, you literally just follow the tree. That's it. You can you can see everything here. Uh, if you want damage, come up, pick it up. Don't come up here until you're ready to go CI. You're not really going to grab the Aura nodes until you're ready to swap to Death's Oath. Um, 
and everything should honestly be pretty self-explanatory as I explained. Um, go for the reservation whenever you're ready to go for the reservation. Uh, the biggest thing about it I would say is that the ascendancy order I would say is even more important than this. So I'm probably gonna say it's better to go Wicked Ward into Vile Bastion. I'm pretty sure it's it's gonna be better to go like Wicked Ward into Vile Bastion into Pro. So I, I guess, okay. The defensive route is <laughs> Wicked Ward, Vile Bastion into Profane Bloom. The offensive route would be like Wicked Ward, Profane Bloom into Vile Bastion. But since we're going to be leveling as Essence Strain, we want to delay this Profane Bloom as much as possible because it's going to mess up with our spreading. So we're definitely going to go Wicked Ward, Vile Bastion. And then once we're ready to go Death's Oath at 62 or 65, whenever it is that we find one and we color it, we'll go Profane Bloom. And then we'll pick up the rest of our reservation nodes. So this, this would probably be like day two or three. Uh, we pick up Malediction after Uber Lab. We acquire a Heretic's Veil. We get a level two Enlighten. We spec into the rest of the reservation. And then we're good to go, you know, with the complete build. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, sorry if it was a lot of information. Uh, I do apologize. But I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what I'm playing for the League Start. Um, I do have a couple other videos to make if you guys are curious. Let me see if I can Alt F4 here and show you them. Let's see. Um, I want to make another one going over the rest of the sanity changes. We've got one. I was going to go over the patch notes, but they cover like 80% of them in the previous videos. We, well, not that I've talked about, but on the stream. So this is, I don't know about this one. Uh, new options for Righteous Fire. Um, I kind of don't really feel like playing the Righteous Fire. I'll be off. I'll, I'll be honest. But uh, there's pretty cool ways to play Righteous Fire now. Like Champion actually looks really insane. So does Juggernaut, and I'll make a video just briefly going over ways to play those. You can still use the exact same build guides as the Berserker, just obviously you're not playing a Berserker. And um, yeah, we've also got like, I guess this one, number four, is done. And then I might actually play a mine build. I don't think I'll be playing traps, but mines look mines look really strong right now with Saboteur, in my opinion. Like, CI mines. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'll go ahead and put a link to my current character along with this little aura tree, uh, along with the uniques used in here in the comments below. So I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care everybody.